there is something about the sound of sirens that creep me out. Of course, we hear them when the emergency services are called into action, which, ultimately, is there to help us. However, the shrill sound can evoke emotions of terror. This clip is of a tornado siren that was heard in Chicago, Illinois, which was to warn its people of a rapidly escalating tornado. To me, whenever I hear sirens like this, it sounds like beginning of the end. NASA have been investigating and exploring the planets and the solar system for a long time. One planet that has given them the most insight is arguably, Saturn. NASA's Cassini spacecraft was able to record the intense radio emissions of Saturn, which are believed to relate to the auroras at the poles of the planet. These auroras work the same way the Earth's northern and southern lights do. What you are about to hear is the eerie radio emissions recorded by the Cassini spacecraft. Although there is absolutely nothing supernatural about these sounds, they truly sound terrifying. The Canadian military began an investigation after hearing a mysterious pinging sound coming from the sea floor in a remote region of the Arctic. The military was contacted by locals after they noticed many of the water's animals became frightened and they could not understand why. The investigation was successful after they were able to record the strange noise. But they were not able to determine exactly what it was. They only referred to it as an acoustic anomaly. This is the sound they recorded, which they have named the Arctic Ping. Long before Richard Ramirez was given the nickname, there was another Night Stalker, and until 2018, he was unidentified. After the FBI reopened the Night Stalker case decades later, they were able to use DNA testing to locate their killer. 
Joseph James D'Angelo. D'Angelo was a former police officer who committed at least 12 murders, over 50 rapes, and hundreds of burglaries across California in the 1970s and 1980s. Before DNA testing was perfected, authorities were unable to cross-reference DNA samples. As a result, the majority of D'Angelo's crimes were believed to be the work of several different people in several different jurisdictions. But in 2018, the FBI were able to use DNA to connect D'Angelo to eight murders. On April 24, 2018, 72-year-old D'Angelo was charged with eight counts of first-degree murder. A plea deal spared his life, but he will spend the rest of it behind bars. During his killing spree, D'Angelo would call the police and taunt them. You are about to hear one of those messages. The following audio is taken from a video that was sent to GadgetZZ.com, in which a man wearing a plague doctor's costume stands in an abandoned barn, holding out his hand which has a light in the palm. The video was burnt onto a CD, and the only thing written on the CD itself was the title, 11BX1371. Many different messages were hidden in the video, using ciphers and encryptions. The video puzzled many people who tried to find its true meaning. The man did come forward and said he was the person in the video. Rather than being a disturbing, snuff video, which many believed, the man claimed it was simply an art project. He posted photos of his plague mask, which is identical to the one seen in the video. However, many still believe the man's claim was a hoax, and the myth surrounding this video lives on. The video is bizarre, but its audio is the most disturbing aspect. The following audio is from 11BX1371.
Paul Michael Stephanie was a serial killer who was convicted of three murders, although it is believed he may have killed many more. What makes him unique is the fact that he telephoned police after each murder, breaking down and crying as he confessed to the brutal murders. As a result, he became forever known as the weepy-voiced killer. You are about to hear the recordings of the messages he left police. Don't talk, just listen. I'm sorry what I did to Compton. I couldn't help it. Don't know why I had to stab her. I am so upset about it. I keep getting drunk every day and I can't believe it. It's like a big dream. I can't think of being locked up. If I get locked up, I'll kill myself. I'd rather kill myself than get locked up. I'll try not to kill anybody else. Fire emergency. Please don't talk, just listen. I'm sorry, I killed that girl. I stabbed her 40 times. Kimberly Compton was the first one. Oh, my chief. I don't know what you mad at me. I'm sick. I'm going to kill myself, I think. Where are you? I'm just going to... There's so many dogs with a red shirt on. It's me. I killed both of you. I'm sorry. I'll never make it to hell. Calm down. Calm down. Oh, yeah. You find me, I just stabbed somebody with an ice stick. I can't stop myself. I keep killing somebody. Yes, please, this is an emergency. Please send a squad to Pierce Butler Road, Malmberg Manufacturing Company, Machine Shop. Please, there's an ambulance, too. There's a girl hurt there. Can you tell me what happened to her? Just hurry, there's a, she's laying on the ground in the back by the, by the railroad tracks, by the edge of what, what's the address? I don't know. Who are you? The Aztecs were Mesoamerican culture in central Mexico that is believed to have started around 1300. They are known for many things. Agriculture, trade, religion, art, and architecture, to name but a few. They are also known for their brutality in battle and in human sacrifice. The Aztecs created many things to help them in battle, and one such thing is the death whistle. The whistle would be blown in battle to scare their opposition. The follow clip highlights the different noises that can be made with a single death whistle. Anneliese Michelle was born in 1952 to a Roman Catholic family in West Germany. She suffered many ailments in her early life, which led to her developing temporal lobe epilepsy as a teenager. However, her family did not believe she was sick in the normal sense of the word, but rather that she was possessed by a demon. Her parents were able to convince a priest to perform an exorcism, or rather, 16 of them. What you will hear is the recording of those exorcisms. However, before I play the clip, which, in all honesty, does sound like a demon possession to the casual listener. 
However, it has to be made clear that when Anna died, her parents and two priests were charged with negligent homicide. Anna perished from starvation and dehydration after she spent nearly a year in a semi-starved state while the exorcisms were performed. Do you believe the following clip is a genuine case of demon possession? Or do you think she is possibly half insane due to the mental torture and abuse she received from her parents? Ich 